Hey guys, what's up? Tamara here. Today I am doing a two for one review. I will be talking about Winter and Stars Above by Marissa Mayer. And I know the Winter review is a little late and I just finished Stars Above, so I figured I'd just throw them together and put a combo together for you. If you want to skip ahead to Stars Above, I will have a little time marker in the comments so that you don't have to sit through the winter portion if you don't feel like it. So as I've been doing lately, I've been sharing what I'm drinking. Today I have coffee again, but it's a different kind of coffee. It is actually a Michigan made coffee. And if you don't know, I live in Michigan. So sometimes I like to find local things and it's really, really good. Let me just show it to you right quick. This coffee is made by Lily New Roasting Company. It is caramel and pralines. It is really good. It is manufactured in Northern Michigan, actually Glen Harbor, Michigan. Uh, this is my first time trying this brand. I really enjoy it. It's very good. It's kind of mild, but still rich at the same time. And you can actually taste the caramel flavor. So it's really good. Moving on to winter. Winter was a truly stellar ending to this series. If you don't know what The Lunar Chronicles is, it's a young adult fantasy slash science fiction retelling. A retelling of several different fairy tales rolled into one. Each fairy tale had its own unique book and Winter is the story of Snow White retold and repackaged by Marissa Mayer. It is a really good story. So leading into Winter we had Cinder which was Cinderella. We had um, Scarlet, which was Little Red Riding Hood. We had Cress, which was, um, what is it, Rapunzel. In between there, we did get Fairest, which was Queen Lavana's story, and that was equally as good as the rest. This story picks up essentially where Cress left off. Um, Cinder and the gang are trying to um, figure out a way how to overthrow Lavana, and we also get a glimpse at Winter. In Winter, we meet her for the first time, and she uh, has been, we've been kind of given a little bit of clue about her. I think it was in Cinder. They talked a little bit about her being uh, the princess who was uh, mutilated, self-mutilated thanks to the queen's doing because she was too beautiful. I just adore Winter's character. She is a very strong character, a very sweet character, almost a little naive, even though she's been through a lot with Lavana. She has um, a lot of strength to continue to do what she has done her whole, almost her whole life, which is refrain from using her lunar gift. If you've been reading along, you know that the, from not using your gift can cause a madness and that is what Winter has and so throughout this she says some weird off the wall things and you know um, her interaction with people is hilarious because of her gift not being used um, like for example uh, we know that um, Scarlet was taken prisoner and she is essentially Winter's pet and it's really hilarious the interaction between them uh, Scarlet is calling Winter crazy literally she's like okay crazy you're crazy I think that is so funny and it's like not in a mean way but she is crazy and it's really fun to see their interaction with that we kind of learn a little bit more about Jason what he means to Winter you know a little bit of their history and we get even more um, in depth as far as how cruel Lavana could be you know she lives on Lunar she lives with Lavana and um, there's a lot going on there and it's too much to get into. Anyway, they all eventually make it to Lunar and it is a war, an all out war to try to get her off the throne. Um, you know, Wolf and his gr crew of people, you know, we kind of learn more about them and how they were altered to be soldiers for Lavana. We learn more about how he got there and what his role is and how his community ends up helping the rest of them to overthrow Lavana. Now, also, we get to even more um, in depth with Cress and Captain Thorn. Um, you know, at first, Cress was kind of, I think, my least favorite character, but her character really stepped it up in this installment, and I like her a little more for it. Um, she really has shown her aptitude to be able to work under stress and really be the hero in the most. Um, low-key way but making the biggest impact so that's awesome all of these characters have grown leaps and bounds since the beginning of this series they're all much older they feel older the book reads like it's older all things that i enjoyed 
And as you'd expect, Lavana is evil. Lavana's guards are as treacherous as ever, and um, it really makes for an exciting read. All throughout the story, I loved how we were able to shift gears back and forth and be with Winter in her situation, and then be with Cinder in her situation, then be with Cress, and then, you know, back again and all around. I really like that. And even, you know, Scarlet and uh, Winter spent a significant amount of time together in this book. So their storylines kind of converged. Um, it was a lot for coming together from all different plot lines and it was seamless. It was really, really good. If you enjoyed the previous three, you will definitely enjoy this. Um, no exception. Uh, this is a fairy tale after all. So, you know, as all fairy tales end, it was a little bit predictable and we kind of knew what was going to happen essentially because it's a fairy tale and even in retellings of the fairy tale you could tell this was going to end in the same sort of fashion so even with the end i really just loved how it all came together and i felt satisfied i felt like everything was settled it was whew, wow okay they made it through and i was very happy with it so with all that said, I rated Winter 5 out of 5 bookmarks. It was a near perfect book. I had no complaints. As you know, I listened to this on audiobook as I did with the previous books in this series and Rebecca Solar just nails it. She has perfected the narration of all of these characters, every voice, every accent. You have a French accent, you have men, women, you have um, different inflections and tones. She really brings the story to life and I definitely recommend listening to audiobooks narrated by her because she was stellar in this series. Up next is Stars Above by Marissa Mayer and this is a short story a compilation and all nine stories tie into the Lunar Chronicles world. They give uh, prequels and um, stories throughout the series and a little glimpse into the future by two years actually. I really enjoyed the fact that we got to see what happened to these characters. Each story served its purpose and it was good to get a more in-depth look into each character's life. For example, the first story was The Keeper and that gave the history of Michelle Benoit and we got a little bit of Scarlet and we got to see their relationship and we got to see what happened to Princess Celine, how she ended up where she did. And to see, you know, Scarlet's grandmother take care of her, you know, so vigilantly for eight years while she was in that tank was astonishing to see. Um, and kind of it, it was interesting to see how that affected Scarlet as a child you know and how where Scarlet came from so that was a really good piece of history next was glitches and we got more into Cinder's world and that was also a prequel to Cinder's book um, and it was her introduction to her stepfather and her new family and we got to see really quickly that things were not fabulous in that household we got to see how her stepmother really hated her and you know how she dealt with that how she kind of was dealing with her new body parts and being a cyborg and all of these things. And you know, while these it was a short story, it packed a lot in there. And we were also introduced to like the whole Letamosis thing in this story as well. And how her stepfather was taken off because he was, you know, infected with Letamosis. So that was a good story to read as well. After that was the Queen's Army. And we got a really good in-depth look into Wolf's history. We get to know where he came from, his family a little bit, how he was enlisted, his first, you know, couple of years enlist enlisted in the Guard, and it, you know, we got to see experience his changes after he was operated on and changed and morphed into what he is now. Um, it was really interesting to see. We even got a little bit, um, see, we got to experience his brother going through that same thing. And you know, the whole pack mentality. So it was a lot of good information in there. And it kind of rounded out Wolf's story, which was nice. Up next was Carswell's Guide to Being Lucky. And of course, it's very Carswell, you know. He's very, um, he thinks he's above everyone. He's barely slick talking. He gets what he wants from people all around. He's kind of lying and trying to scam people and he's trying to use his charm to get what he wants from the girls. It's kind of typical Carswell, you know. Um, to be honest, he's not one of my favorite characters, so I kind of felt eh 
about this story. It just really shows how conceited he is. But on another note, it kind of also shows how much he's grown since this point in time when he's in high school. So, you know, it, it was relevant. Following that is After the Sunshine Passes By, which is Cress's story. And it's really sad. It's very short, but it's it's sad. You know, it tells her story, how she ended up on that satellite, how um, Sybil tricked her into kind of uh, being alone on that satellite for years on top of years. You know, she only wanted to, you know, help the crown and go and be more than what a shell could be. You know, it was kind of this sweet little, oh, poor Cress. You really got played story but you know it was relevant as well it really emphasized how smart she is what ability she has and why she is so important to um, the cast of characters following that was the princess and the guard and obviously that is winter's prequel along with Jason and we get to see how they grew up together how winter first came into her lunar gift and how after trying to use her lunar gift for good that turned terribly wrong she kind of felt that using her gift was a bad thing so that was the story to kind of guide us into why she stopped using her lunar gift why she refuses to use it in the future and that was a very good story again it was a sad story you know a lot of these um stories were sad especially this one it had a more adult theme going on underneath we even got to experience um the whole torturing by lavana you know when she was forced to cut her face um because she wouldn't use the gift so that was a very interesting story and i guess um that was good to read right after finishing winter because you know we just got finished reading about how she has lunar sickness because she won't use her gift and like this kind of gives you background as to why she won't and why she is the way she is and why she is a strong character now the seventh chapter was a little android which was a little strange it didn't really fit but you know it was fun it was a little take on the little mermaid with a few characters that we're familiar with so it was fun to read nonetheless eighth was the mechanic and that was more about cinder and kai and that was from kai's point of view which was really exciting we never get to read anything from the men's point of view and that was interesting to see kai's take on cinder when he first met her last and not least was the amazing wedding um it was called something old something new i'm not going to tell you got married because it would spoil it and i don't want to do that but it was a wonderful closure we got a lot of fuzzy warm feelings about all the couples in this story as it ended. So I would rate Stars Above 4 out of 5 bookmarks. It was a really good um, way to kind of seal all of the stories and finish with a bang. So that's it you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Let me know if you plan on reading Winter and Stars Above or if you already have. If you listen to them on audiobook, let me know. I'd like to know if you enjoy the audio versions as well as I did. So that's all I have for today. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy reading. Bye guys.